There's a term in the Bible that you will come across in the New Testament over and over and over. In fact, I think it's about 140 times you'll see this mentioned by the Apostle Paul. And the term is called in Christ. That is a term we must get to know. It's our identity. If we don't know our identity, it's going to be hard to live out a life with no identity. Can you imagine if all of a sudden you woke up with no memory, amnesia? You wouldn't know where to go. You don't know what your work is. You don't know where your family is. You don't know what your name is. It would be hard to function without an identity. And yet we've got Christians today out there trying to be something and they don't know who they are. All they are is they're looking at the Bible, they're trying to emulate the Bible and not really doing a good job at it anyway. That's why you see the church full of what they say hypocrites. We're not supposed to mimic Christ. Now listen to me. This is what upset me about the WWJD, what would Jesus do? I'm not called to imitate God. If I end up imitating God, it's through the ways and means of the new covenant, but not the way of the old covenant. And most Christians today are trying to emulate God through willpower, self-effort, behavior modification. And all the Bible is to them is a self-help book with its rules and regulations of how to be a better you. And you can't do it. Ask your spouse if you're becoming a better you. And if you are, through the old covenant, it's only because you did it through willpower. Because you know you can change through willpower to some degree. It's not a true change, though. Your nature never got changed. Just the externals got changed. And depending upon how much willpower you have, will determine how much change you can perform. But again, when the heat is on, that, that, that who you really are inside that's never been touched or changed by the grace of God will eventually come back out. Now, so in Christ, now you'll see that term in Christ, of whom, in him, I'm putting all those together, and you're going to see that that was that was spoken by Paul at least close to 140 times. It is based on our identity. Everything you think, you do, Acts says this, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. So just that scripture there in Acts means in him we live, that's in Christ, we live, we move, and we have our being. And yet to try to live this Christian life outside of your identity of being in Christ is impossible to do. That's why when Peter came to Jesus, after the rich young ruler was asked to sell everything he had and come follow Jesus, the guy couldn't do it. Well, he could do the Ten Commandments. That's what he bragged about. But to sell everything that he had and come follow Jesus, and he couldn't do it. So Peter says, Lord... Who can be saved? And Jesus comes back and says, with man, it's impossible. So whether you're trying to be saved by Ten Commandments, trying to be blessed by Ten Commandments, whatever you're trying to do by the works of the law, not happening. The law was never meant to be obeyed. But God came up in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, with a new idea. By the way, let me sidebar that with this. New means altogether something that's never been there before. Don't ever think of the New Testament or the New Covenant as a revision of the old. The fact that it's new means it's got nothing, it's totally different, and I can prove that to you in Hebrews where it says that the Old Covenant is obliviated. I mean, it is it, it, it is passed away. It's not a revision. The New Testament is not the revision or a New Covenant, a revision of the old. It's it's practically brand new, never been seen, touched. It's totally new in existence, nothing to do with what was prior. New, not new and approved, 
brand spanking new. And the way that God writes the law in our hearts is through faith. Now, let me say this, going back to the in Christ. I'm trying to figure out a way. I always try to figure out ways that I can explain the Bible to people through illustrations and symbolism or metaphors, whatever. I, 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 I always try to figure out some unique way of how to do that. Well, on, there's two, and, and I want to quickly go over them. The first one, what it means to be in Christ, is I've got this book right here. All right, now you, you see this book right here. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of book it is. This happens to be the book by Martin Luther on the Three Treaties. It doesn't matter what kind of book. Any book will, either, any book will suffice. Now, this book and this piece of paper are two separate identities. Before you got saved, this is you. Okay, you're doing your own thing. And this is Christ. Who, who's calling you to be born again, to believe in him. And so before salvation, you two were separated. The Bible says you, this is you, was separated from him, the commonwealth of God, strangers to the covenants of promise. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't get what you, say you couldn't get what he had to offer by being separate. You... Okay? Can't look like him by doing what would Jesus do. See, right here is the Old Testament looking at you right now. God telling you Ten Commandments on what to do. Right? And so you are on your own to do what he says you got to do. Are you following me so far? So you guys are totally, totally separate. It's like two... It's like a husband and wife. They're supposed to be one, huh? Right? But if they don't if they don't understand oneness, that shared oneness, she, let's say if you're a woman, this is you, and if you're a man, this is you. She's browbeating. Ah, I do this all the time and just beating and beating and beating and then nah, I'm going my way, she's going her ways, and there's your divorce. There is no way in the world anyone can be like someone else. So this WWJD doesn't work, okay? Unless, of course, and actually Christianity doesn't work like this. You, Jesus, and you're trying to live for him, it doesn't work, all right? But let's go back to that term in Christ. If I, right here, well, actually, I'm going to have to switch it around. Let's say... This is Christ. This is me. I'm switching it around. It doesn't work the other way. Because it just doesn't. And you'll see why in a minute. So let's say I want to live like him. The only way. Can't do it apart from him. John 15 says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Remember, without Christ, we can do nothing. With man, all things are impossible. So for faith. Okay, for faith, that's the only way you get saved. By grace through faith, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. By faith, God puts me in Christ. That's why you see that term in Christ. Now, by the way, let me just, let me sidebar this with something else. I'll have these sidebars all over the place. Is that baptism is more than just being immersed in water. In fact, in Romans 6, he's not talking about when he says we were baptized into Christ. That baptism is God putting us in Christ. When I got born again, God took me and put me in Christ. Now watch what happens. So when he did that in Christ, and that's what I'm trying to convey your identity here. It's going to help you. It's going to help you. It's going to get you out of religion, number one. When God put me in Christ, this is what he did. The two became one. Wow, come on. It says in what is it, 1 Corinthians, and my scriptures may be wrong, but 1 Corinthians 6, maybe 17, it says, He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Now think about that. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. So when you are joined to the Lord, you are one spirit, and you are one with God. John 14 says, me and Jesus say, when I go to the Father, the Holy Spirit will take me, 
and the Father, and all three of us will make our abode in man, and we will become one. Okay? So at the born-again experience, the in Christ, I'm still sticking on the in Christ thing, God put me in Christ. Now watch. So the envelope, or this piece of paper, is now in the book. See it right there? It's now in the book, right there. Now it's one. They're no longer two. Kind of gives you an idea when two people get married. Um, and you have that unity candle or that the grains of sand or whatever. The two become one. But in this respect, boy, it's this, this, this is really, it really happens. It really, truly happens. For faith, I'm in Christ. So what becomes true of the book becomes true of the piece of paper. Now, I can't say that when they're separate. What's true of the book is not true of the piece of paper. They're two separate identities. But when I'm in Christ, for faith, God baptizes me, puts me in Christ. That's what that word baptize means. That's what the scripture in, in um, Romans 6, first couple verses mean. So God puts me in Christ. So now what's true of the book is also true of me, the piece of paper. So if I take this book, as Watchman Nee says, and I mail it to California, is it true if I say that the piece of paper is also mailed to California? Sure. I can say everything about this book, it's going to California. But what I'm saying about the book is also true about the piece of paper because now the paper is one with the book. Now, I hope you're getting this because it's so true, okay? It's, 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 just how, it's just how it is. So if you start thinking like this, that what is true of Jesus is also true of me, there's your identity. And every, you can't think separate from Christ any longer. You are in Christ. You can't think apart from him. You have to think like him. There's a lot of things I can do. Like, let's say, for instance, temptation. I don't fight the devil. Because if I fight the devil with all this spiritual warfare teaching going on and how to overcome temptation and all that, none of, it's, none of it works. You know it doesn't work. I don't engage the devil. Because if I engage the devil, here's what's happening. I'm coming out of the book and I'm trying to fight the devil without Christ. i got to stay in Christ, in this book. And so when the devil approaches me with temptation, I don't say no. You know, was it Nancy Reagan with drugs, just say no? See, the minute I do that, I'm on the forefront of the battle, and I'm fighting the battle. So just saying no doesn't work in Christianity. I know it's, it's, it's noble to do it in the world, but in God's kingdom, you don't say no. Because the minute you say no, you are engaging whatever you're saying no on in your own willpower and self-effort. And again, depending upon how much willpower you got, will determine whether or not you're going to win. But when you go up against the devil, they know amount of willpower going to eventually win against him. You got to approach the devil. You got to approach drugs. You got to approach sex. You got to approach everything now with this revelation of in Christ right here. So you don't say no. You don't bind the devil. Why would you have to bind the devil? I bind you devil in the name of Jesus. Why would you have to do that when Jesus already bound him? And why are you fighting for victory when the Bible says we are already overcomers? You're trying to fight for something you already have. You're trying to become something you already are in him. See, religion is always trying to get you to become something True Christianity has already said you are. We've mixed Christianity and religion and screwed it all up. That's why I'm anti-religious. And really don't even like the term Christianity anymore because Christianity is nothing but a religion. But when you look at it through relationship, I am in him. So when the devil comes at me with temptation, I don't, I don't, I don't bind the devil. I recognize in Christ he's already bound. And so I turn to Christ, and he has to deal. In other words, have you ever answered the door? Someone's knocking at the door, and it's not for you. It may be for somebody else living in the house. 
So they, let's say your name's Bob, and someone comes knocking on the door, and they're asking for Susie. What do you do? You go get Susie, and you let Susie answer whoever's knocking at the door. So when the devil starts knocking on the door with his temptations, you don't answer that door. You go get Jesus, and you say, Jesus, somebody's at the door, because it's not your battle. The battle is the Lord's, and he already won it, so let's let the victor answer the door, not me. Do you understand? So I approach everything, at least I try to, because religion's always trying. Let me tell you what, religion's always trying to get me out of Christ and doing my own thing. And God's, through his word, is always trying to get me in. Let me tell you something. Faith puts me in. Works take me out. Law takes me out because it makes me do my own thing. Christ obedience becomes now my obedience. You understand? All that Christ obeyed, he did for me. So when God put me in Christ now, I get to experience the merit and favor of God because of Christ's obedience. Because I'm in him. Remember, what's true of him now becomes true of me. If I throw this book in the water, does the paper get wet? Absolutely. If I throw this book in the fire, does the paper get wet? Or wet? Does the paper burn up? Absolutely. And that's a good point, by the way. Made a mistake, but let's look at it. If I say the, the, the book gets burned up and the paper gets wet, that means this paper was not in him. See the difference? You cannot live this life without being in Christ. And when you got born again, you were put in Christ. It's why in Romans 6, Romans 6 is huge. It says, when he died, we died. How can that be? I wasn't even born yet. You wasn't even born yet. How could this be? How can I be in, how could I be crucified on that cross with Christ when he existed 2,000 years ago? How could I, or you, be on that cross with him. And then when he was raised from the dead, it says we too also was raised. I wasn't even alive. Faith makes everything this Jesus did, everything he did, true for me, true for you, because faith puts me in him. Now we can go into healing. Was Christ ever sick? No. Is Christ in heaven sick? No. Folks, we've got to let, get our faith into this. We've got to start believing who we are in Christ and what he's accomplished through the finished work. And my identity of being in him is the very beginning of understanding, number one, not only who I am in Christ, but what I have now in Christ. Now, there are several ways we can go with this. There are several examples in your everyday walk. I, I talked about temptation just now. And that when and the enemy comes, I don't engage the enemy. In Christ, I gauge the enemy. Remember Jude, in the book of Jude, where Michael the archangel was disputing with Moses, with, with, the, with the devil over the body of Moses? And how did Michael the archangel, who's not even a Christian, and by the way, we are higher than angels once we're born again. We've fallen from that position at, in the garden. But when we receive Jesus Christ, he puts us in Christ. Think about that. Is the angels above Christ? No. Remember in Ephesians it says we are seated with him in heavenly places. Not below Christ, but with him alongside because we're in him. So everything that's true of the Godhead is true of us when it comes to position. Now, so... Michael the archangel answers the devil, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord, not I, rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Now, you can rebuke the devil, but you've got to be able to do it in faith out of this identity. Remember the seven, seven sons of Sceva that tried to rebuke demons like Paul did, and they, the demons turned on him and pounced on him and beat him and cut him and the guys go running out. What, what, why did the demons pounce on these when they wouldn't pounce on Paul? He had authority. He understood who he was in Christ. A lot of stuff's not happening for you right now because you're not living out of that realm of identity.
It's as simple as that. And it takes time to get that identity renewed in your mind. But you got to start somewhere. And like today, this illustration of in Christ is the beginning. Now I'm going to come back in part two and share with in Christ and show you an example using the royal family. In part three, I'm going to come back and show you the example of in Christ by using the example of an athlete. So we're going to come back in part two and show you this in Christ further and really ground it, get you rooted into the understanding of it by showing you the example of the family in Britain, the royalty. And then on part three, I'm going to come back and share with you um, another example of being in Christ by using the athlete. And you don't want to miss these because they're going to help you ground yourself in your identity. Again, going back to the very beginning, if you have amnesia, you're not going to be able to function in life. You, you, you won't even know. You look into the mirror. Who am I? And they'll say, here's a picture of your wife. I don't know her. Um, you're a accountant. What, what's an accountant? I don't, you know, depending upon how much amnesia you got. You, folks, you're not going to be able to function in life with amnesia. And Christians have some type of amnesia spiritually because they're not functioning right in the body of Christ. They're not living out their true identity and the devil's having a heyday with them. They're in confusion. They don't know what's, what's theirs, what's not theirs, what they, how much authority they have, what authority they don't have. We, we just, and the enemy is picking saints off by the dozens because we're not walking out of the identity. We're walking out of religion. We're not walking out of relationship identity. We're walking out of religion. And we can't do that. Religion kills. Religion kills. It doesn't work. But relationship, faith in Christ, is the answer.